Hey y'all! <laughs> hey y'all! Happy Monday! It's Cleopatra, and welcome back to the Power of Nature with Cleopatra. And y'all, don't forget to hit the thumbs up, hit the bell, and subscribe, y'all, because every time I post something on YouTube, y'all will be able to get a notification and know that I posted something. So y'all, thank you for all of my people that's already subscribed and watching the videos, but don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel, y'all. Y'all, happy Monday. I hope that y'all had a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I hope everything went well and prosperous for y'all this last weekend that just passed and the rest of the week that's coming ahead of y'all. Go ahead and claim it and know that your week is going to be wonderful and prosperous. Claim it, y'all. Claim it. <laughs> so, y'all... I only got one thing to say for Nature News today. And the reason why I got this only one thing to say for Nature News today is because what's going on in the air kind of goes with what I'm talking about today, which is mucus. Telling y'all about all the different types of mucus, the colors of the mucus and what to look out, what they mean and every different thing or whatever. But y'all, there is trouble in the air. As we already know, the air is polluted. Every year, millions and millions of Americans are exposed to levels of pollution, y'all, um, that the American public health just say is extremely toxic and unhealthy for the public. Literally, fossil fuels are a large source of air pollution that comes from human activity, us, the things that we're doing. So y'all, and a lot of things that's polluting the air, we cannot help it, we can't control it. We have to go to work because we have to pay our rent, we have to feed our families, we have to you know, maintain our daily life. So certain things, like even if we don't have a car, we gotta take the bus, we gotta do different things. So like, it's like, oh, they wanna encourage more like walking and bike riding, but you know, in big cities, sometimes you just can't walk everywhere. You need some form of transportation with wheels on it. <laughs> <laughs> that a bike is too extreme to get you there or whatever unless you're gonna be sweating to death like a wet dog going into work every day but like literally in 2020 237.6 million americans more than 70 percent of the population were exposed to more than a month of elevated levels of ozone and fine particle pollution or whatever so y'all a lot of things we just can't control but literally no matter what percentage no matter what they say is there's literally no safe level of air pollution it's no safe level of pollution pollution is pollution so y'all at the end of the day with all this pollution that we cannot control because we can only really control ourselves and the things that we have going on is you know we unify and decide that hey everybody is you know gonna build whatever kind of cars i guess everybody will go electric or whatever um but you know we can't control the things that we put in our body to protect our system when the pollution does come to us so when the air is polluting us things that we're touching things that we're doing when it's affecting our system we can always make sure our antibodies are strong and ready to fight off anything that's coming towards us so y'all that's neither here nor there just be mindful of, you know, the environments that we around, the things that we doing and what we putting in our body to help with, you know, the pollution because the pollution is going to come and literally it's not really much that we can do for some of the pollution. But that's all I had to say or whatever for the nature news. But y'all, I'm excited because today <laughs> I'm talking about five queens today, y'all. Five African queens. Let me get that correct. Five African queens today. So y'all, and the reason why I know y'all probably like, why did Cleopatra's nature start putting in these African facts? And the reason why I started adding African facts to my show before I talk about, you know, the natural herb or whatever is because they seem to only want us to know history that started in the 15th century. And, you know, there were tons and tons of successful dynasties, kings and queens way before the 15th century. Cause I want y'all to keep in mind that, you know, they had to join forces to take us because before the 15th century, we were, you know, battling and conquering and defeating with no issue, but you know, 
it's, you know, strength in numbers, but that's neither here nor there. I wanted everybody to just understand and know, like, who we are and know, you know, because none of my educational background consists of me opening up a history book and ever reading anything about any queens and kings in Africa that were conquering and um, living wealthy estates and literally building armor. You get what I'm saying? Like, you know, they don't tell us these type of things or whatever because they only want us to see ourselves from 15th century and above when, you know, I myself prefer to live a non-colonized life as much as possible. So, with that being said, my first queen is Queen Amina. Now, Queen Amina is a Nigerian queen. She ruled over a vast stretch of the land in like the 16th century, the 16th and 16th and early 17th century, born in the royal family of Zazu, which is presently known as Zarya today or whatever she was trained in political and military matters. Now, at 16, she was, you know, supposed to go to the throne or whatever, but her older brother went instead. So she was second in command to her brother for a number of years. So while she was second in command to her brother, she was actually doing things as far as building up her cavalry and gaining wealth and fame throughout this time or whatever. So they also like fought and worn plenty of wars or whatever so at age 43 she did ascend the throne and she stayed there for 34 years or whatever she reigned ambitiously she won wars she enlarged territories literally she was excellent as far as trading and all kind of things or whatever throughout the entire sahara region or whatever but one of the things about her that's so amazing that she's most known for is she built these walls of protection around all of her cities. And any city that she conquered and defeated, she also built walls around them too. And the walls wasn't for like seclusion or anything like that. They can come and go as they please or whatever, unless you was one of her prisoners that she captured or whatever. Um, but they were more or less for protection because, you know, um, it was a lot of kidnapping going on, a lot of killing going on, you know, them stealing people from this tribe to that tribe, different things like that or whatever. So she built walls of protection and and even still to this day, some of the walls that she built are still standing. They're still strong. They're still there in remembrance of her. Like even today in Nigeria, they do have statues of Queen Amina still up that you can go and see. You can see the walls and all things. But one of the my favorite things about Queen Amina is that she first started the cultivation of cola nuts. Now, if you know what cola nuts is, you know cola nuts is Bissy. Bissy, this is Bissy. This is the cola nuts, literally crushed and everything to the powder form or whatever. Now, Bissy is good, extremely good for digestion issues and things like that and poison. It is a great poison antidote and it's good for weight loss as well. So Bissy is A1 when it comes to this. So I was extra excited that Queen Amina is the first to, you know, start cultivating cola nuts. So, and like not only that, metal armor as well. So like metal armor as far as like, you know, the metal head shields and all that kind of stuff, or whatever. So yeah, she did iron helmets, chain, um, mail to protect against the the enemies and all kind of different stuff. So y'all continue to do y'all research on Queen Amina because Queen Amina is amazing. Of course, she is present day Zarya, one of the queens in present day Zarya, which was Zazu. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Zazu, Z-A-Z-Z-A-U. Um, but yeah, that was Queen Amina. Queen Amina um, is amazing or whatever. My second queen is Queen Makeda. Now, y'all, Queen Makeda is the queen of Sheba. Queen Makeda is one of the most intelligent, wise, and wealthiest women of her time. Literally, her and Solomon was considered to be on the same level as far as um, wittiness, wisdom, intelligence, and wealth. 
Yeah, so, um, and not only that, the Queen of Sheba and Solomon did have a son together, Menelik the first. So, um, yeah, so the Queen of Sheba was very, very intelligent, wise, rich, wealthy. Um, she heard about the fact that Solomon was kind of on the same level as her. So she took a trip to Jerusalem to basically question Solomon. She wanted to quiz him on his knowledge and expertise or whatever. So she was very impressed with him or whatever. He asked her to stay the night. She basically asked Solomon like, hey, I will stay the night with you, but you have to promise me not to take me by force. And Solomon said, hey, that's fine with me, but you have to promise me not to take anything from the palace by force. They agreed or whatever, stayed together, bad men elite the second or whatever. They had a very, you know, known relationship that lasted for a while the queen of sheba the queen you know queen makeda queen of sheba which is ethiopia is mentioned in the old hebrew testament the new testament the quran the holy book of islam like a lot of these holy books mention the queen of sheba and her relationship with solomon so it's no secret about those two or whatever um also, she did rule over Yemen as well, Ethiopia and Yemen or whatever. She was a wise queen, very, very wise. I'm not going to stop saying how wise Queen Makeda was because she literally was, like I said, on the same level with Solomon. And in those times, Solomon was considered to be the wisest, the wealthiest, the most intelligent man of that era. So... Yeah, I think that that was amazing. So, y'all, very energetic, commerce skills, different things. She led, like, long voyages, had, like, 80 ships. Um, she all around just did great things or whatever. And not only that, she was a very humble and generous lady, too. Like, she, you know, all the places that she visited and traveled, she took them things like, gold stones ivory jewels and other precious metals you know what i'm saying because she was a known trader she did have tons and tons of you know stock and trading so again y'all that was nubian queen makeda the queen of sheba y'all do y'all research on her and also the kansas candaces of mero so the first queen of mero egypt her name was it's a long name i'ma just call her shanna but y'all can research the Candaces of Monroe, the first queen of Monroe. I'm going to call her Shanna because it's a long name. S-H-A-N-A-K-D-A-K-H-E-T-E. -E. <laughs> now, she ruled around 170 B.C. and Mero. Now, she was a powerful queen and warrior herself. She was extremely tactful in devising war strategies and all like... Um, no man could defeat her literally no man could go into hand-in-hand -in -hand combat with queen shanna she was fast she was agilent she was everything she you know was amazing so y'all search candace the queens of candace or whatever um next y'all is nefertiti now the thing about nefertiti is nefertiti is her disappearance is still a mystery because she just disappeared. Some say she maybe, you know, led the life of a pharaoh dressed like a male, like, you know, which is crazy is not only did she disappear, but like some of her daughters disappeared too or whatever. So yeah, it was weird. Neither here nor there. Maybe I need to keep reading and expanding my knowledge and go farther, farther, farther into some, you know, really ancient books and texts. <laughs> but Nefertiti, of course, was the queen of Kemet, Kemet, Egypt, of course, the royal wife of, as y'all know, Akhenaten. Most people already knew that, that, you know, Nefertiti and Akhenaten were a pair. They had six daughters together. Six daughters they had together. Now, they ruled around when it was the wealthiest period this was the wealthiest time or whatever that they ruled but they did separate themselves because they started to worship the sun god aten nefertiti and akana and basically separated themselves um from the old reign and of ancient egypt and they built a new capital city named armana i know i ain't pronounced that right now they ruled 
the Egyptian kingdom with wealth, this and that. I'm not going to go too deep into Nefertiti and Akhenaten, but y'all do y'all research on Nefertiti and Akhenaten as well because Nefertiti had plenty, plenty of names. Um, she was named Great Praises, Lady of Grace, Sweet of Love, Lady of the Two Lands, Main King's Wife, Great King's Wife, Lady of All Women, Mistress of Upper and Lower Egypt. So y'all do y'all research on Nefertiti and also the last queen that I'm gonna talk about is Queen Ashanti. Um Yah Asenwa. I hope I'm saying that right. Yah Asentwa <laughs> was the queen mother of the Ashanti Empire in Ghana, y'all. Now she became queen when her her grandson was exiled by the British in 1896. Now she tried to bring her grandson, the king, who was meeting with shells in the kingdom and to divide to devise in many ways or whatever. So y'all, um, I see how long I've been going and talking about these queens or whatever. So it's a lot that I typed up about Ashanti or whatever. But Ashanti was great in the war. She had an army of 5,000 men battling with her. And, you know, just search queen, the queens of Ashanti or whatever. So, y'all, that's all I have today for the did you know. I do want to jump straight into mucus, y'all. Straight into mucus. So, y'all... There are so many different types of mucus and the reason why i'm doing mucus today or whatever because a couple of people have been getting sick a couple of people have been coming down with common colds and they have been saying that mucus is their main issue now y'all know how i am i'm kind of a critic at times so when you got the vaccine and you get a cold i'm like oh hell no because in my mind <laughs> If that vaccine can stop corona, it can stop a cold. Why you getting a cold? I know you can still get everything. I know, you know what I'm saying? But hell no, I ain't with it. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Let's find out about mucus. So, y'all, mucus is a protective substance that's excreted from multiple areas of the body. It could be the mouth. It could be the sinuses, throats, lungs, stomach, intestines. Now, mucus itself consists of multiple constituents, but major components of the substance is called mucin which y'all yeah, probably knew that already anyway mucus protects your respiratory system um it basically sends like a lubric a lubrication through the respiratory system but the body can produce too much too much mucus or whatever because basically it's produced by membranes in the nose and the sinuses and its main function is to trap like bacteria viruses allergens dust or pollen in the nose and prevent them from spreading throughout the body and making you get sick but eventually the mucus and the substance eventually the mucus and the substances that it all trapped or whatever head to the stomach so that way the stomach can pass it out of the body that's why i say it's a very very good thing every day to drink water because the water is what help things keep on flushing and going throughout the system getting things out of the body that don't need to be in the body so it's always good to make sure that we are consuming vi water vitamins and minerals because they all play a role in helping the digestive system gi system flush things out of our body that cause us to get all type of different sicknesses and ailments and different things like that or whatever so every time you breathe in allergens virus dust and other debris or whatever the mucus sticks to it go to the stomach pass out the body or whatever now mucus itself contains antibodies and enzymes as well that are designed to kill or neutralize harmful bacteria in the air because again mucus is not something that's supposed to harm us it's supposed to be something that you know slightly protect us like you know um it's supposed to be like a thin coat in our body that we don't even really supposed to know even exists but when the body gets to producing too much mucus then we start getting like things like bronchitis colds flus, fevers um snotty nose headaches all these kind of things or whatever so 
If everything works as it should, you won't even notice the mucus. But if you have an infection, you may see a change in the color, whatever. If you smoke or exposed to irritants in the air, you may produce, it may be producing more than usual, whatever. So if you start producing too much clear mucus, it may mean that you are experiencing allergies and your body is trying to get rid of the irritants like pollen and dust, different things like that or whatever. Now, when you got a cold, a side now, when you have a cold, a sinus infection, or bronchitis, your mucus may turn like light yellow, beige, or greenish. The reason is because if you have an infection, your body produces more white blood cells, and then it sends them into the airways to fight it. Those white blood cells then contain a substance called neurofilm, which can give your mucus a yellow or greenish color, whatever. Mucus may also appear to be green when it is thickened as well, or whatever. I know sometimes y'all have seen y'all Self, like hark up to spit or whatever and it's a little green or whatever whatever or you made us a may notice a little bit of brown or red and it's because some blood have this i mean some brown or red in your nose in your mucus or whatever after you blow your nose this is because the blood is in your mucus which is generally a result of irritation like drying out tissues lining in the nasal passages passages caused by like excessive rubbing blowing your nose too much you know a little bit of blood in the mucus is nothing to worry about but if you start seeing excessive bleeding or whatever then it may be a sign of an infection bronchitis pneumonia cancer different things like that or whatever so and keep in mind y'all um when we talk about mucus and film i know people associate mucus and film as being the same thing um film is a form of mucus but Film is actually produced by the lungs and the respiratory system. It's like a sign of inflammation and irritation. And mucus is produced by the nose. So you may hear the term um, sputum. Um, this is a film that it that expels through coughing or whatever. So different types of mucus have colors so just be mindful of the colors when you're looking at the mucus and your body or whatever so you will know like how to handle it and what to do when you do see these types of mucus so thin and clear mucus is normally healthy not really bothering you white thicker white mucus goes along with the fields of congestion maybe a sign of infection is starting the white color comes from increased number of white blood cells if you have asthma a lot of white film may be a sign of inflamed airways so um, light yellow or green mucus or film is a color um, that means your body is fighting an infection or whatever. The color comes from enzymes in the white blood cells. Get plenty of rest and stay hydrated or whatever. Always stay hydrated at all times or whatever. Dark and yellow, dark yellow or dark green. These colors especially is accompanied by a fever, cough, and sneezing are signs of an infection getting worse. So y'all, when y'all start seeing the light yellow, Go on, take care of it right then. Go on, take care of it right then. Because when it reach dark yellow and dark green, you know that you're getting worse and worse and worse by the day or whatever. So pay attention to the colors of the mucus or whatever that's coming out your body. Even not only that, pay attention to the color of your bowels and what's going on with your body. Like, is your body? Never be ashamed and embarrassed to look at your own body, to look and pay attention to what's coming out of your own system. Because once you can pay attention to the colors that's coming out of your nose, your mouth and your butt you can basically determine everything as far as the health of your body what you need and do not need to be doing with your system or whatever so y'all red or pink film mucus um blood or irritation or something like that is getting clogged somewhere in the body or whatever a lot of people go through nosebleeds and different things like that if you see brown that's like dry blood dry dirt particles and residue from like smoking tobacco um can cause brown mucus or whatever smoking can also trigger like asthma symptoms and prevent the inhaler from not working too or whatever so be mindful if you do smoke and have asthma and different things like that now if you see that your film your mucus is black. That means that the smoking is too heavy. Air pollution as well. Getting back to air pollution and how no level of air pollution is safe. Air pollution as well can cause black mucus as well. Um, 
So yes, y'all, but there are a number of health conditions that can trigger excess mucus production in the body like acid reflux, allergies, asthma, infections, cold, um, lung diseases such as bronchitis, pneumonia, cystic fibrosis, COPD, all of these things and, create and cause extra mucus to produce in the body or whatever. Now, um, excess mucus production can also result from certain lifestyle changes and environmental factors such as um, a dry indoor environment, low consumption of water or other fluids, high consumption of fluids that lead to fluid loss like coffee, alcohol, certain medications, smoking. Um, but there are a lot of things that we can put in our body, a lot of things that we can eat and drink every day to make sure that we don't have an excess buildup of mucus in the body or whatever. So vitamin A, C, E, B, and potassium um, are really good when you're talking about things to rid mucus out of your body, consuming things that are high in vitamin A, high in vitamin C, high in vitamin E, B, and potassium are things that cleanse the body of mucus and toxins naturally. So again, vitamins A, C, E, B, and potassium are things that cleanse the body of mucus naturally. So making sure that we put those things in our body or whatever every single day, protecting our system. Because once again, y'all, it's about prevention, not cures. I like to make sure my body is healthy and strong at all times. So anything that comes to it, you know what I'm saying? My antibodies are going to kick in immediately, not in two weeks. I don't need my immune system to lack and say, oh, I'm going to heal you in two weeks. I'm going to get you together in two weeks. No, that's unacceptable for me, immune system. So I make sure that I do it. I need, do what I need to do to feed my immune system every single day. Um, and also different things that, you know, everybody's home remedies. I know way from a child, I can remember like if I got a cold, my grandmama would say like gargle with some warm salty water. Warm salty water has always been a remedy to clear mucus from the back of the throat and help kill germs or whatever. Also using a humidifier to moisturize the humidifier um a lot of people use humidifiers especially when they got new babies or whatever but humidifiers are a one i actually need to get me one i don't have one either but humidifiers are good because moisture in the air can keep your mucus very thin or whatever staying hydrated drinking enough liquids especially water can loosen up congestion and help the mucus flow out of the body or whatever warm liquids can be effective but try to avoid caffeinated beverages if you already have an issue with mucus building up in the throat and different things like that or whatever so also avoid like irritants fragrances chemicals and pollution if you having an issue with a bunch of mucus build up or whatever um if you smoke try to stop smoking if you always have an issue with mucus building up in your body or whatever um licorice root is one thing that's very good for removing film and mucus out the body ginseng berries euthanasia pomegranate guava tea guava tea is something that you can find at cleopatra's nature etsy store and while we on that topic don't forget to hit the bell like share and subscribe to cleopatra's nature youtube y'all don't forget to hit the bell and a thumbs up so y'all will know every time i post something on youtube um also ginger lemon and garlic those three things together ginger lemon and garlic is a one ginger lemon and garlic i'm gonna yeah, so ginger, lemon, and garlic. I'm going to keep on saying it. Those three together are A1 for cold flus, literally stripping and flushing the body or whatever. Also, another thing or whatever that my mom and my grandma did used to always have us to do too is apple cider vinegar. I think that I had mentioned that before or whatever that, you know, my grandma and my mama used to every now and then or whatever make us drink a spoonful of apple cider vinegar or whatever. But apple cider vinegar literally clears a stuffy nose. It contains potassium, which thins me mucus um and the acid that's in it protects prevents bacterial growth as well um that can contribute to nasal congestion so mix a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar in a glass of water and drink to help with sinus drainage or whatever or 
on for real quick, real quick. Also, sour sap is one of those things that relieve respiratory distress. Um, it's an anti-inflammatory and it can help clear out the airways, relieve congestion and soothe irritation or whatever. Sour sap also eliminates stem and mucus or whatever. So y'all, it promotes fast healing in a re it, with respiratory distress or whatever. So if you having some type of respiratory issues and different things like that, sour sap leaf tea is what you should be drinking right now. Also, elderberry is one of those things. Elderberry and sea moss, um, I kind of always talk about them together or whatever because to me, like, you know, they have a lot of the same benefits and properties. So elderberry, concert, um, elderberry syrup is A1 because it does expel and clear out film or whatever that can get trapped in foreign agents of the glands or whatever so when we are trying to remove phlegm from the body once it trap everything that it needs to trap and it heads towards the stomach to get pushed out of the body sometimes it falls into you know foreign agents different glands and you know different things that's in our body or whatever but the elderberry syrup is there for that so Elderberry is essential for like sore throat, colds, cough, bronchitis, asthma, and any type of issue that could or may or will affect your respiratory system. Same thing with CMOS. Everybody is on CMOS, so I don't got to go too much into detail with CMOS because everybody is already using CMOS. So continue. The quokka bush is another thing. It is a natural bronchodilator. A expectorant it literally expels y'all um it suppresses cough all types of upper respiratory problems like bronchitis colds flus cough asthma all those type of things or whatever the quokka bush is a one for that too trumpet tree is another thing that clears mucus that cause congestion whooping cough and fever also trumpet tree is one of those things that i do encourage people to substitute tobacco when they are smoking um their joints or whatever instead of putting the gravel the front to leaf or whatever you can use trumpet tree instead of using the gravel so yes trumpet tree is a one with that or whatever lime we all know lemon and lime we know their roles what they do how wonderful they are but lime also treats respiratory disorders it is a it's rich in flavonoid oil or whatever that's it basically is a anti-congestive medicine, really. Lime is what it's considered, like, literally. Um, so, y'all, get lime. Anise. Anise is what I drunk today. Anise and clove. Both of those things or whatever, to me, they kind of taste the same. They smell so good. Anise is one of those things that they use in licorice. It tastes like licorice it literally does anise to me tastes like licorice but the thing is anise boosts respiratory health as well um it enhances enhances our respiratory system or whatever it literally expels all of the mucus and film out of our body or whatever is utilized in like lozenges, cough mixtures things like that or whatever um clove as well lessens the symptoms of colds and flus or whatever it also acts as an expectorant which helps to relieve con um, congestion and makes it easier to get rid of respiratory uh, tract distress and film that's in the respiratory tract or whatever so y'all lemongrass is another thing i love lemongrass you can also order lemongrass and lime leaves on Cleopatra's Nature as well or whatever I have both of those things, lemongrass and lime leaves. Um quokka bush, I do sell that too, but it is sold all out, y'all. Um lemongrass is A1. It is really good and filled with vitamin C or whatever, and it provides relief to nasal blockages, flus, and other respiratory disorders like bronchitis and asthma as well too. Um, leaf of life, just as you hear it, leaf of life, it is the leaf of life. This leaf literally helps with everything. This plant has been shown to rid the body of mucus used for respiratory conditions like shortness of breath, asthma, colds, cough, bronchitis. It literally, you can drink it as a tea or you can, juice the leaves or you can eat the leaves 
raw, the plant has intestinal cleansing properties or whatever. So it cleanses the body of waste matter, which can definitely contribute to weight loss, immune system boosting. So y'all, leaf of life. Um, just other things or whatever. Vervine is good for clearing the throat. It's good with like throat tumors and different things like that. Pennyroyal as well. Helps with respiratory distress. Sour sap, Spanish needle, and Visnega helps with like bronchitis, whooping cough, different things like that or whatever. And also like certain fruits that we can eat like pineapples. Pineapples breaks down proteins in the body or whatever and it boosts immune function. So pineapples are really good. Berries, all citrus fruits are good, especially grapefruit is wonderful at breaking down excessive mucus that's in the body. And not only that, leafy green vegetables are even good or even better. They are a one. They are good with doing their things too or whatever. Um, onion and garlic, um, onion and garlic. I know people like, oh, wow, but onion juice, the juice of an onion, um, it helps with hair growth. It helps with clearing out your respiratory tract. Um, it helps with skin. Onion juice, I know it's strong, but I'm telling y'all, onion juice is the way to go. <laughs> Literally, y'all, onion juice is the way to go. So y'all, that's mucus, some things that y'all can, you know, do and be mindful. Just pay attention when y'all see the colors of your mucus and what's going on. When you see the colors of the mucus, what you can do when you see these colors, like, hey, once I get to seeing brown mucus, I know that maybe I need to clear it brown and black. I need to clear out, you know, smoking a little bit or whatever. Once you get to seeing pink and red, a little bit of blood in there. Um, maybe you're blowing your nose too much. You're rubbing your nose too hard. Different things or whatever, unless it becomes excessive. Light yellow and green, you know that, you know, you starting to get a little bit a cold dark yellow and green your cold your flu is getting worse and worse by the day and you need to take care of it immediately white mucus um come with a feeling of congestion infection is starting clear you pretty good with clear mucus as long as it's not excessive so y'all thank y'all again for tuning into the power of nature with cleopatra and do not forget to like share and subscribe to the youtube channel hit the thumbs up Thank y'all so much, and y'all have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the week.